So I just got back from a shoot. I have this beautiful shot right here, but it's missing a little something. Now luckily there are a few ways we can add a little bit of depth in the finch yourself. So here in the project I have a simple grade setup. A CST in that transforms into airy white gamut, exposure, white balance, CST out to Cineon film log, and then one of our results, film LUTs. And we're going to be working after the final conversion. So the first thing I want to add is a little bit of blur on the edges. Just like an anamorphic lens, a little bit of stretch. So we're going to call it stretch. And we're going to apply a directional blur. I'm going to put the angle to zero. I'm going to lower the blur strength. Then we're going to apply a circular mask. Make it very wide, way wider than the frame, but roughly the same height. Fade out the edges and make this roughly the same height. Then we're gonna infer the mask. Then we can adjust this to be however strong we like, and then it adds a little bit of blur to the edges. So we can lower the blur amount. I think 0.2 looks about the best. And there we go, we added a slight little blur that you see up here in the trees as well as down there in the grass. It adds a little bit of depth and takes away a little bit of detail in the front to draw our eye more towards the main character. Now I shot this on my Tamron 28-75 which is a modern lens. It already has a little bit of chromatic aberration and some other artifacts, but I want it to look a little bit more finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a note before that real quick, call it aberration. Here you can type in chromatic aberration removal, you can apply it, and then if we zoom in here, what you can do is pull this one all the way towards the right. And you'll see that on the edges there's a little bit of aberration going. You can do a little bit of the same with the yellow one, like that, to make it a little bit more interesting. And now you'll notice that in all the high contrast areas, like up here, here, and maybe a little bit around the character, there's a little bit of chromatic abrasion. This makes a great difference in differentiating between the background and the foreground and adds just a little bit of character to the footage. We can go much further and get much more creative if we wanted to. For example, we want to add a different kind of blur. We can add another note. We're going to copy the stretch blur, call it swirl for example. But instead of using a stretch blur, we can use a radial blur. We can put the radial blur on the footage stylized or realistic, it's up to you. You can add a little bit, turn off the stretch real quick. Then we can make most of our adjustments with the controls. So we're gonna go in here, grab the mask, edit the mask real quick. And there's plenty of ways we can change this mask to look more appealing, let's put it that way. So we're gonna focus it on me. much more blurred and then we can lower the strength just a lot and as you can see everything around me is a bit out of focus and there's a bit of a swirl to it this also adds a lot of focus on the character if that's what you want and you didn't get around to shooting in a in a wider aperture there you go and this is a more stylized effect that also stacks with the other one if you wanted to as you can see you now added a lot of depth to the footage from going from something that's completely sharp to something that's a little bit more characterful. Of course these are extreme examples and I don't recommend putting the settings this high, but if you need it for a dream sequence or something similar, it's very useful to know how to do it. Now I highly recommend you just experiment with the types of blurs you have and make cool effects like this one, which is a zoom blur. You can create dozens of different effects in many different ways. So that was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. See you all next time.